Do you want to know how much fucking money there was in the recording industry back in the 70s and 80s? I could see by the look on your face you don't, but... Uh, yeah, well, I'm going to tell you anyway. The record companies were so rich, they were willing to sell you record albums that they knew you weren't going to pay for. How does that even work? Well, if you're in my primary demographic, you already know how that works. But for the six of you under 40 who are listening, it goes like this. In every goddamn magazine published, there was this little cardstock. And on that cardstock, you would fill out nine album selections that you would receive for just one shiny penny. And in return, you promised to buy a set number of albums in the future at the regular price. There were no credit cards, there was no bank info, just a name that you said was yours and an address. And they believed you? I have a very believable face. No, God, no, they didn't believe that. They knew damn well that at least 40% of us were never gonna buy those other records, but it didn't matter. That's how fucking rich the record industry was. You see, Columbia House Records, which is what it was called, operated on a very simple plan. Yes, it's called mail fraud. No, technically that's what we were doing. Their plan was, first of all, most people do have integrity, so they did buy those other albums at an enormous markup to make up for all that stolen music. The other thing they did was sell albums that already made all the money they were ever reasonably going to make. You didn't get new releases from Columbia House. You got records that were already out for at least three or four years. Their chart run was over. They'd already made millions of dollars. So if some teenager stole Michael Jackson's Thriller five years after it was released, the record company wasn't really out much money at all. The 40 cents or so it cost to press and package the album, max. They could afford to risk negligible loss on the off chance they could land an honest person who would pay twice what they could get that out before used or on the discount racks at their local record store. It was the kind of thing the record company understood well. Old music is dead, and the kind of people who paid for dead music were at best suckers. So I never felt the slightest remorse for ordering 10 more record albums every time I changed addresses, which when I was in the military was a lot.